Guys, we are delighted to announce that we are working with the one and only One Football app where you can follow your favourite team, your favourite leagues, and of course, get in game notifications straight to your device. And guys, that is not all. One Football are now offering people in the UK and Ireland the chance to watch selected match highlights and live games from some of the best leagues in the world. I'm talking Serie A, La Liga, Liga Portugal and the DFB Pokal, including a Saturday night live Serie A game. So what more could you want? What are you waiting for? Head down to the link in the description below and download the One Football app. Hello guys and welcome back to Sweet and Sour Soccer and this is Premier League Predictions Week 15. We are not far away from the World Cup. It's this month. I think there's two or three games uh, before we actually break for the big one. I think there's a Carabao Cup fixtures in there as well. But we are focused on this upcoming weekend's fixtures. And to kick it all off, well, before we kick it all off, do me a favour, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. We are a general football channel. Right, guys, Leeds versus Bournemouth is up first. And for Leeds, you know, it was looking perilous. We spoke about it last week on the predictions video. Hadn't won a game, and uh, I think it was since the end of August. Started the season incredibly well, but went on an awful run of form. However, what a win at Anfield. Looked like uh, at one point you had to settle for the draw. However, came up clutch at the end. For Bournemouth... Ah, you know, they've been doing ever so well. You tune a up at home, two spurs, and then you concede three goals in the second half. It's it's not great, but I guess you've got to look on the bright side. Still 14th in the league. A lot of people, maybe even Bournemouth fans, thought you'd be in the relegation zone at this point. Just being honest, you're doing ever so well. For this game, I'm going to back Leeds. I think they are. That game at Anfield would have given them so much confidence. Elon Road crowd as well. We know how good the Leeds fans are. I'm going to say Leeds and I'm going to go with a 2-1 home victory. Uh, next up, we've got Man City taking on Fulham. And for City, it took a bit of brilliant, well, I'll say a little bit of brilliance from De Bruyne. Uh, I mean, this guy is just, in my opinion, I think he's very close to being the best midfielder in Premier League history. If he's not already there. There's just nothing that the guy can't do. Unbelievable going forward. He gets back and helps out the team. He never stops running. He can uh, put in a challenge as well. I think the guy's sensational. For Fulham, I mean, what can you say about them? Only five teams in the league have scored more goals than Fulham. They really are doing the business. 22 goals already this season. Quite, uh, quite incredible. And of course, they're looking up rather than down at this point in time. Saying that, uh, will we see the return of Haaland? I think we will. Um, Man City at home. I'm not going to say they'll beat Fulham 5-6-0, but I am going to say a 3-0 home win. 3-0 to Manchester City. Next up is Forrest taking on Brentford. And for Forrest, capitulation at the Emirates. Yes, it's Arsenal and they're unbelievable this season. Yes, it's at the Emirates where they're playing unbelievably as well. But when that first goal went in, there was only going to be one winner. And, you know, you don't really want to say that going into a game. They just seem to lose their heads when they go 1-0 down. It's not as much damage limitation for them. And you've got to start thinking about that now. It's, there's no point looking at goal difference in April because it could be too late. If you're going to lose to Arsenal, to City, whoever, you know, try and lose with a little bit of dignity and, you know, try and keep the goals down because at the end of the season, it really could come down two goal difference. For Brentford, they got that 1-1 draw with Wolves. They went 1-0 up in the second half and then, you know, they concede a minute and a half, two minutes later. Max, I think they'll be very disappointed with that. But when they're 11th in the league, 15 points, I tipped them for one of the favourites to go down this season. That second season syndrome, losing Ericsson. I thought the buzz would have wore off at Griffin Park, but no, honestly, they're doing ever so well and, you know, congrats to Brentford. For this one, I can only see a Brentford win. I'm sorry, Forrest, but I just think if you don't score first, I just really think your heads go and I think Brentford will score first and I'm going to say 2-0 to the Bees. 2-0 to Brentford. Next up is my team, Wolves at home to Brighton and for Brighton, what a, what a 
outing last time, you know, Chelsea, return of Potter, 4-1. A Trossard, what a player he is, by the way. Gross, to name a few. They've got some unbelievable players in their roster. McAllister, um, Vyman as well. Really, it's such a, such a good squad that they've got. For Wolves, I mean... Six goals in 13 games. What, what can you say? I mean, if Neves isn't scoring from outside the box or we're not scoring penalties, we are just not scoring goals this season. Uh, 19th in the league, uh, one point above Forest, I think we are. It's, it's just not looking good. But there is news that Lopetegui opened talks with Wolves this week and wants to come to the Molyneux. So that could be a big, big change for us, a change that's needed. Oh, I should be going for Brighton. I mean, the eighth in the league with 18 points, I should be going for Brighton. And as much as I'm a Wolves fan, I've got to try and be impartial. I mean, if they were playing Forest, I'd probably say Brighton 3-0. But, you know, the only saving grace is defensively, we're not bad. I know we conceded four against Leicester, but that's up to one off. It's not often Wolves concede four and five in a game. I think I'm going to give it Brighton, but I think it's going to be close. I think I'm going to say 2-1 to the visitors, 2-1 to Brighton. Next up is Everton taking on Leicester. And for Leicester, you know, played ever so well against Man City. You could say they had the best of it. Man City had one shot on target against Leicester and it went in. A, a postage stamp free kick from De Bruyne. So I think they'll take a lot of heart from that Leicester. I really do think they will. For Everton, unbelievable. Only, I believe it's Newcastle, City and all. Arsenal are the only three teams that have conceded less goals than Everton. This three at the back, or five at the back, the acquisition of Connor Cody, Iwobi moving central. And I mean, he looks unbelievable now, doesn't he, really? I've got to hold my hands up. He's still got a lot to prove, don't get me wrong. We can't base it on 10, 11 games. But he's slowly but surely starting to prove me and a lot of people wrong. Hopefully it can continue for you Toffees. Uh, I think there's going to be goals, even though Everton have got a good defence, just because, I mean, Le Leicester have scored 21 goals this season. 21 goals at the start of November. They should be in the top half, never mind the bottom three. I think there's going to be goals, and I think it's going to be a draw. I think they share the spoils. And I I'm going to say 2-2. I think there will be a few goals at uh, Goodison Park. 2-2 between Everton and Leeds. Next up, we come on to the biggest game of the weekend, obviously. Chelsea against Arsenal. Now, you've got to remember, in well, in the last 10, 12 years, Arsenal do not have a good record at Stamford Bridge. But they did win this fixture last season. I, I think they got their first win there last season. I think it was the first time since 2011. Please let me know if I'm wrong, Chelsea and Arsenal fans. But this squad, not only are they doing well this season, incredibly well, this squad knows what it's like to win at Stamford Bridge. And that's something that, you know, it really will bode well. And we spoke about Chelsea earlier when we were talking about Brighton. That 4-1 defeat, how's it going to work? Are they going to be a bit nervous? You've just got pumped by Brighton and now you've got the league leaders coming to Stamford Bridge. Are they going to want to put on a show? Are they going to try and grind out a result? This is a tough one to pick. In years gone by, you just say Chelsea win and move on. But uh, yeah, if I'm going to be fair, I've got to base it on the form. And Chelsea have got a few injuries. The strike power is not really there for them. I've got to back Arsenal. I think Chelsea score, but I'm going to say 2-1 to the Gunners. I think they stay top of the league after this weekend. 2-1 to Arsenal. Next up is Villa hosting Manchester United. And for Villa, I mean, what can you say? You lose Gerrard, you then go and pump Brentford 4-0. Tails are up, everyone's buzzing around the Villa complex. And then Newcastle, and you get pumped 4 0 yourself. It's just an absolute roller coaster for Villa this season. For United, really gritty performance against West Ham. I think United fans will feel that they were deserving of that win. They probably thought they did enough to get the three points. And it would be hard to disagree with that. But I think West Ham would have thought maybe they should have gotten maybe at least a draw out of it. But you've got to say for United, three wins and two draws in their last five. They're really, really going along nicely at this point. I can all, again, it's a little bit like Chelsea. Are they going to bounce back from that heavy defeat at Brighton? Are Villa going to try and put in a performance? Because this United team can be beaten. You, you know, we've seen that. You can take points off United. 
I've got to go United, though. I've just got no confidence in Villa at the moment. And when you've got Tyrone Mings in the defence, he can quite easily concede five goals in a 90-minute game. I, I've just got, I think he's one of the worst centre-backs in the league. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Wolves fan. I think he's absolutely shocking. I'm going to give it United, and I think they keep a clean sheet. I think I'm going to say 2-0 to Man U. I could be completely wrong. I could look like an idiot. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on that game. Next up is Southampton versus Newcastle. For Southampton, they always just teeter above the relegation zone, don't they, in recent years. Never really higher than 12th, 13th. Very seldom do they enter into the relegation zone. That 1-0 defeat last time out against Crystal Palace. And for Newcastle, what can you say? I mean, they've conceded. Uh, they've only lost one game this season. Only Arsenal and City have done that as well. They've got the best defence in the league. What Eddie Howe is doing is unbelievable. Yeah, he spent a bit of money, but he hasn't spent four five hundred million. I know he spent two hundred and twenty million in two windows, but this this was a bad team before he, before he took over. Let let's make no bones about it. Yes, they've spent money, but a lot of it is to do with how well Eddie Howe and his coaching staff is doing at Newcastle. I've got to go Newcastle. Southampton one winning five. Newcastle riding high. I think they get it. Um, yeah, and it's just picking a scoreline. I don't think they blow them away. I think Southampton will do okay at home, but I'm going to say a 2-0 win to the Magpies. 2-0 to the visitors. Who have we got next? West Ham taking on Palace in uh, or at the London Stadium, I should say. And for West Ham, looking a lot better than it did uh, not too long ago. You know, they were in the relegation zone at one point and then they got out of it, but then were hovering around 16th, 15th for a while. They're now 13th. 14 points on the board. And for Palace, I couldn't believe it when I looked at the league table. In my in my head, when Wolves played Palace um, and we lost 1-0 not too long ago, I swear Palace were one place above us. We were 18th and I'm sure they were 17th. Now, they're 10th in the league. They're the, the top half on 16 points. They've just out of nowhere, just been going along, doing their business. Three wins, one draw out of their last five. They really have just gone under the radar, unnoticed, and they're climbing the table. I think this will be a good game. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching this one. I think I'm going to go for another draw. And I think there's going to be goals again. I think I'm going to go for another 2-2 draw between West Ham and Palace, last but not least, it is Spurs versus Liverpool. You could argue this is almost maybe the biggest game of the weekend, but I would give it to Chelsea and Arsenal, in my opinion. Both these teams, you just don't know what you're going to get. Spurs, they seem to concede first in every game, make it difficult for themselves. Uh, themselves. It worked at Bournemouth, you know, three second half goals, fair enough. But there aren't many Premier League teams where you can say, 2-0 down at half-time, we're probably going to win the game. Maybe Bournemouth, Forest, sorry to throw you in and dig you out there, Forest. But yeah, there's not many teams that you can afford to keep going 1-0 down to and still picking up points. They've really got to try and work on that. For Liverpool, four wins, four draws, four defeats. I like to think I know a little bit about football, but I just don't really know what's going on with Liverpool at the moment. Is it the acquisition of Nunes? He's doing all right for a lot of... For as much as people want to laugh at him because it's a Haaland Nunes comparison, which is a bit unfair anyway, he's looking like he could bag 18, 20 goals in all comps this season. Is it Nunes? Is it Van Dyke's dip in form? Is it the ageing midfield? Is it the injuries? Is it uh, lack of investment in certain areas? Or is Sadio Mane literally worth this many points? <laughs> is Sadio Mane worth an extra? 20, 25 points to this Liverpool team a season. I find that one a little bit hard to believe. Just uh, as I say, I think I know a little bit about football, but I just do not know what the problem is with Liverpool at this point in time. And I think the problem is Klopp and Liverpool don't know the reason themselves that they're struggling so much. Again, let me know in the comments, Liverpool fans, what you think. I think this will be a draw and I think it's going to be cagey. I don't trust either defence, but I also don't trust either attack. Maybe I trust Spurs a little bit more going forward. I think I'm going to say 1-1 one, one, and I've got a funny feeling both goals are going to be from you know, defensive mistakes. I don't, I don't think either side is going to keep carving each other open. I'm going to say 1-1. One, one. 
at um, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Guys, let me know your thoughts on all the games. Hit the comments and also subscribe to the One Football channel. It's actually well, the app. It's a really good app. I use it. A lot of people that I know use it now. It really does help keeping up to date with all the games. And you get to watch a live Serie A game on your device. Can you really argue with that? Guys, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye. We'll <laughs>